Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a crowdfunding preview for Once Upon a Line. Uh, this one is a very unique story-based game. You're going to get your familiar fantasy story in which you're playing heroes trying to avert a tragedy. The wrinkle here is that it integrates a crossword word-finding uh, functionality into its game. This is a mat in which I can erase... Yes, erase. <laughs> uh, you think that's going to leave a lot of shavings? Yes, it's going to leave a lot of shavings. Uh, so then I'm going to reveal some words and I'm going to get some clues and continue to find words along this grid map. And uh, through that finding, I'll be able to progress the story. Uh, there will be hints that come through these story cards uh, that will progress me uh, through chapter and chapter and unfold this mystery. In addition, there are player powers. Some of the words that I can uh, discover uh, are going to be able to help me get new pieces and uncover different parts of the map. This one is very, very unique. I'm eager to show it to you. As you can no doubt figure out, this is a disposable game. Once I have scratched off all of the stuff here and progressed the story, then this is no longer usable as a gaming piece and also contains story spoilers. So this preview will be short and sweet. I'm just going to demonstrate a few of the mechanisms, uh, talk about a few of the wrinkles uh, that it adds upon the core mechanism of finding words, and hopefully that provides enough information to determine whether Once Upon a Line is worth your backing dollar. But before we get to all that, let's talk about the One Stop Co-op Shop. You're on the YouTube channel. We also have our YouTube stream channel. Please subscribe to both of those channels and like the videos that you enjoy. We have our podcast, the One Stop Co-op Shop, available wherever you can get gaming podcasts, hundreds of episodes deep of gaming-focused content, solo, and co-op. We also have our Discord community, which is 24 hours a day active, international, always talking about the latest and greatest, crowdfunding, old favorites, hidden gems, whatever you want to talk about. It's a great community. If you want to join, it's completely free. Check the show notes to this video below. We also have our Patreon, which helps us keep the games coming to the table and the tech upgraded. Uh, if you would like to contribute, we'd greatly appreciate that. You would also get exclusive access to videos and channels on the Discord. But if you just want to join our community, it's completely free. We are looking forward to your contributions. We are the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. This is a story-based game with a very, very light rule set, so I feel we are free to jump right in, get to know the world and what we're getting ourselves into. Since the dawn of time, you, the Zephyr Rhymes, have watched over the great balance in secret. When tragedy threatens to plunge the world into chaos, these superior entities intervene by taking control of those with enough power, sometimes called heroes. As a Zephyr Rhyme, you must work against fate and try to deflect the hardships yet to come. Each of your choices will create glory or tragedy in the story. Speaking of heroes, let's go ahead and meet one of them. The month of August is in full swing. The honey harvest has already begun. Iria is very proud of her bees. They have been very prolific. Just like every week, the young swarm keeper has to go to the city of Kel to deliver her honey samples to the analysis laboratory. But today, Iria is lagging behind and evening is fast approaching. Servan, who was supposed to take over at the shelter, has not yet returned. The journey becomes more and more perilous with each passing minute. With nightfall comes many terrifying nocturnal insects. And that is the setup. Uh, this is the initial card for the honeymoon scenario. I've taken the liberty of scratching off the initial word, which is dwelling. I was directed to do so here on the back of the card and also given my main quest, get to the city as quickly as possible and also told to retrieve my initial character, which is Iria. Iria has some flavor attached to her and also uh, a stat line. So we uh, don't have access to these immediately, but as I uncover words and letters, I'm able to fill this up and get some improved tiles. So let us see how scratching stuff off works towards progressing the story. Here is the initial word, dwelling. I have a bunch of cards that are gonna have the beginnings of a few words. As I encounter those key words, I get to unlock the card and read that story. Night will soon fall in the Valley of Sequoias. You slip on your flight suit and you're ready to go. As you pass through the door, you whistle for Hexa, your pet honeybee. The rascal is nowhere to be seen. Her behavior has been a bit strange recently, and she has begun wandering farther and farther from home. It's very likely that she's wandered off again, perhaps hiding in a wild colony, or maybe she's dozed off in a secret cache. 
And so here is where you get into the combination of word finding and deduction that is the heart of Once Upon a Line. So you have three words that are given to you, uh, big flags, <laughs> find these words, honeybee, colony, and cash. So what are you supposed to go for? Uh, initially, uh, these underlined words uh, indicate they are attached to whatever word is on the front uh, at a right angle. So it's automatically telling you that somewhere along this lines are both colony and cash. So you have your first clue. Your next clue, uh, so you see that there is uh, two lines over here that indicates a story word. There's also a line over here which indicates that this is either the beginning or the end of a word right there. So that gives you a lead. Uh, there is clearly a word uh, dug in here somewhere. So which of these words could it be? Only cash uh, is eligible. C-A-C-H-E. Uh, the word ends in E. Words can be printed up or down. So that is where we get into the game's innovative action system. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you're going to get these yellow uh, spaces. So you're going to get one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to use a four. Uh, right there because cash is five total letters one is uncovered and four that is going to be one action And now I'm going to take my tool and get to scratch it and <laughs> ahead of time right now You are going to generate a lot of shavings So please do this on a surface where you don't mind getting a lot of shavings and having to brush stuff off And there you go, C-A-C-H-E. So let's see what the uh, symbols are. Uh, that would be a line and a bracket over here. And so as you can see, Iris character sheet has a bracket which indicates that I found a word of power that does not progress the story. However, that lets me advance my character who will progress through multiple chapters of the story. So how that works is I have uncovered cash so that I could use those letters towards uh, some power up. So I don't have a C in my cluster of gifted, skillful, and adroit. I don't have an H either. <laughs> I do, however, have an A. Uh, so I cross that off and an E, and I'll cross that off too. As I cross off letters and I'm finished that off, then I can uncover these special tiles. So now the next word that I have to find is colony. So I have some candidates over here. Every, every word attaches. Uh, there are no free floating words. The game is going to take care of you uh, and make sure that you are uh, flowing in an organic way. So uh, it tells me because of the underlined words at a right angle. So it could be either here, here, or here, L, L, or N. It can be parallel. These would not make its own word. Uh, this would be colony right there if it was there. But let's say that uh, I'm going to give a shot. And I'm going to use another action. I'm going to use my one uh, to see if it is attached right there. So that would be a second action. Let's go ahead and cross that N off. Let's see what I get. So I already know that colony is not here uh, because this is a blank. That's okay. I don't, nothing happens. But there's no way for either of the word to fit on the bottom or the top. So it is in one of these two spaces. Process of elimination, that's how deduction is all about. So let's go ahead and let's try this right there. We have, uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, C-O-L-O-N-Y. Let's try to see if we get C-O right there. It is not C-O, it is uh, though L-N. So that would be C-O-L-O-N-Y. Hmm, so that was an action right there. And let's go ahead and try to finish that off. Can I finish this off with a five? No, I can't reach uh, that far. So let's try to finish off uh, that bottom part. I can overlap. There are certain rules uh, as to what I can do, what I cannot do, but it's pretty uh, simple and straightforward once you get into it. So let's see, I have CO, that is right there, that is. A completed round. I've used one, two, three, four actions. And so I would progress to my next round, which would reset all of my pieces. But time is passing. I have triggered the line of tragedy. And as you can see, I only have so much time. So this is not an open-ended adventure, people. You have to get those deduction skills going and try to make educated guesses as to where the words are. So as you can see, uh, I have uncovered a shrinking of my basic tiles. 
So I'm going to shrink one of my tiles by one. We're going to go from a three to a two. I just kind of picked that randomly and I'm going to move on. So more effects are going to happen as I progress down this time track. So let's go ahead and put our uh, one here. That's going to be an action. And we are going to just uh, make that official and uncover. We're going to make that official and uncover the last word colony. Colony is line, line, story-based card. And wouldn't you know it, there is a card for colony. A massive wild hive made up of thousands of cells hangs from a sequoia tree. You can hear the buzz of a honeybee emitting from every alcove of the structure. Amongst this noise, you can just make out the signature sound of Hexa. You will recognize her by the bracelet fastened around her leg, and you will finally be able to take flight. And so here you have an example of the main quest. Uh, so it, the game takes care of you. It's going to tell you uh, what you need to do, how you need to find those words. Honeybee and bracelet are to be found. Then I would scratch off this other zone. Uh, so this would represent a transition from the quote unquote blue zone to the green zone. And it would give you a further story card. And so here is where I can use my deductive skills in terms of locating these words. So then honeybee is in underlined. So I know it is a perpendicular to the indicated word. So I'm going to look for honeybee. It can be or cannot be, I should say, here or here. I've uncovered that. It cannot be here because I've uncovered this too. Uh, there's no room for it unless H-O-N-E-Y-B-E-E. -E -E. Oh, it could be there too. <laughs> Uh, or it could be along here or along here. So you're exploring, uh, finding out, uh, trying different combinations, trying to find the most efficient way through this puzzle. So I think that's enough to let you know the overall vibe and rhythm of the game in terms of the word finding and how the game takes care of you, takes you from one place to another as you uncover words. I did want to highlight, though, one a little part that tickled me, which is the riddle. So then eventually you're going to find a riddle and that will lead you to a challenge gateway, which in this tutorial is presented on the single card. But as you can see, as you go through the game, there are tons of uh, riddles and challenges to explore. So for this particular one, I have claws, but I have no feet. With me, you can make a steady beat. To make a break, you must choose boards, blocks, pianos, or even horseshoes. From the smallest tap to mighty thunder, there is not much that I can't break asunder. How are your riddle solving skills? <laughs> this game will put you to the test. So then uh, it does give you resources. So as you can see, if you have uncovered uh, certain aspects in your inventory, then you get some advanced hints. I'm not that cool. So <laughs> I wouldn't be able to get that hint over here. You do have a hint system. So I'm going to go ahead and uncover that, which is... Apologies for uh, a little bit of tutorial uh, prototype component, so it didn't come out as clearly as I would want it to, but that says nail. And so I would uncover one of the hint boxes and find out what happens. And so that is what the game calls a dystopian point. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, you can explore what uh, that means for your game on your own. But uh, given it uh, has leg, a claws but no legs, it has nail, so I'm going to guess hammer. So if this was uh, not hammer, then I would get some severe penalty, but I'm feeling pretty good about my guess seeing how this is a tutorial. Again, prototype components, uh, so apologies for the quality of the scratch, but it clearly says hammer, so I'm able to progress in my game. And so as you can see, there are boatloads of worlds to uncover, stories to move through, uh, different piles of cards that are going to take you to different places in each individual story, characters to unlock and to progress as you go through. There is a lot to offer with Once Upon a Line. Once Upon a Line is on crowdfunding right now. Check the show notes. You will find a link directly to the campaign page. This is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop, reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.